Adabrana, Adabrana, Shalom Bach. Because of my brothers and friends, because of my sisters and friends, please let me ask, please let me say, peace to you, Liman Beit Adonai Eloheinu, this is the house, house of the Lord. I wish the best for you. Really great to see you all. I get to be um, the opening act because stories open your heart, right? Actually, music opens your heart. And then stories open it maybe a little bit more. So um, I had a Hasidic story all picked out that I was going to tell that I thought was appropriate to the theme and all, but as stories do, and as songs do too, um, we serve the Holy One with joy. And if another story wants to be told, well, that's what happens. So I thought, especially after hearing um, Reb Arthur last night um, talking about how he became a neo-Hasid and his sister became a Buddhist, I thought, well, I'd go Jubu tonight, yeah? You know what, I, you know what I'm talking about, Jubu? Okay, this is the right crowd. I, I actually heard a, heard a joke yesterday, okay. A Christian, a Hindu, and a Buddhist walk into a bar, and they're all Jewish. <laughs> you know that bar? Yeah, here in Ashland, right? Right, because we're all, we're seekers, right? We're seekers of enlightenment in whatever way that we can. And many of us in Jewish renewal went pretty far from the rigid Judaism that maybe we grew up with or to find a deeper spiritual path. And then guess what? We found it's all here in Judaism anyway, so we're back. And um, sometimes I find stories that are parallel um, Buddhist stories and Jewish stories that really um, have the same message with slightly different vehicle or maybe the, they have a similar vehicle with a slightly different message and I don't know which these two are but here you go. So once a disciple of the Buddha who had been listening at the Buddha's feet for many years and learning said to the Buddha, you know I've noticed there are a lot of people like me who've been coming many years and some of them, well, they seem to be pretty enlightened. Of course, you're enlightened and some of them not so much, right? I, myself included, I have far to go. And you're so wise and you're so compassionate and you're so enlightened. Why can't you just lift up those people with your wisdom and compassion and move them along a little bit. And the Buddha said, well, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> he said, no, I'm from Rajabita. Oh, Rajabita, that's five miles down the road. So do you go back there often? I go all the time to visit my relatives. And so you know the way from here to that town. Oh, I know it exactly. I could walk it in my sleep. Well, do other people ask you how to get there? Well, yes, yeah, sometimes people ask me for directions to my town. And do you tell them? Of course. Do you leave anything out? No, I tell them exactly how to get to Rajava. So that means that all the people that you have told exactly how to get to Rajava have gotten to Rajava, yes? No. Only the ones who have walked the path themselves. Ah, said the Buddha, well, I cannot lift up or carry anyone along the path. They have to walk their path themselves. Now, the Jewish version of this I found in Reb Zalman's book, Davenin. And here's how this one goes. Once when Reb Dovber was a young man, he had a good friend. 
And the two of them would daven together all the time. That's what they loved to do together. So every day, you know, they would put on the tallis and the tefillin and they would pray and they would sway together every day. But time went on and Reb Dovber went on to be a very famous rabbi, the Magid of Mezrich. And his friend went a little different path. He became a businessman. And he would still daven. Every day he would put on his talis and his tefillin and he would daven and his wife would run the shop. But once a year he would travel to Leipzig because he needed to buy all of the things, all of the merchandise that he would use for the next year for his business. And on one of these trips, on the way home, he thought, I'll go see my friend, Reb Dov Bear, the Magid of Mezrich. And when he got there, the first thing they wanted to do together was to daven. Oh, old friends. And they put on the talis and the tefillin, and they began to pray together. And they were davening and praying and swaying. And after a while, the businessman finished his prayers, and he put away his talis and his tefillin, and he waited patiently because Reb Dov Bear, the Magid, was still davening away, and he was davening, and his friend waited very politely and patiently. And the Magid kept on praying, and he kept on davening, and he kept on praying, and he kept on davening, and his friend was getting a little bit impatient, but he waited quietly. And after a while, after about another hour, the Magid finally finished, and his friend said, Amen. <laughs> and then he said, can I ask you a question? The Magid said, of course. He said, what took you so long? I mean, I know you're a famous rabbi and so on, but how much could you have to say to God that it takes so long? And the Magid of Mesrich said, well, let me ask you a question. Every year, you go to Leipzig to buy all of your wares, right? Yes. Well, humor me a minute. Would you just close your eyes, he said to his friend, the businessman, and I want you to imagine, imagine that you're getting in your wagon, you're getting ready for your trip, you're traveling, imagine that you stop at an inn. Can you imagine that? His friend said, yes, I got it. OK, now imagine that you go on, you reach Leipzig, you go to the first merchant, you pick out what you want, you go to the next merchant. You with me? I'm with you. Then you go to the next merchant, you buy until you have all your wares, you load them into your wagon, and then you make your way back home. Got it? His friend said, yes, I could see it all. OK, then, you don't have to go. What do you mean? Are you crazy? Of course I have to go. I can't just imagine it. This is my livelihood. I have to be there. Aha, said the Magid of Mezrich. When I pray, I can't just think the prayers. I have to be there. And getting there takes a long, long time. And Reb Zalman said, the soul wants to linger. Just like Reb Arthur was talking about in Shabbat, how we give it that chance and it takes a long time for us to really be there, right? Beware, well, the Buddha said, every step we take along the path gets us closer to the goal. But what is the goal? So the Buddhists might say it's to get to the heart of bodhicitta, that soft, true, untouchable, untaintable heart of goodness and softness. And Reb Zalman would say, he did say in this book, that the goal is always to be in dvekut, in oneness, to be in loving closeness with God. Bodhicitta, same thing. 
Yes. So may we.